Right, so I was, I was saved not very long, a couple of weeks, and somebody invited us to a full gospel businessmen's fellowship meeting in Honeydew outside Johannesburg in South Africa, and they said, Kenneth Hagin is preaching there. Now, I didn't know who Kenneth Hagin was, so I wanted to find out who he was. So they gave me a little book on healing. And I read the book on healing, and they said, this is the guy that's preaching there on Thursday night. You've got to come listen to him. Man, I read the book, and I was so caught up in the book, and I thought, I need to meet this man, and I need to go there. My brother phoned me. He was studying for a Dutch Reform minister, which he is today. But in those days, it was 1976, and he was studying to become a Dutch Reform minister. And he phoned me. He just came back from x-rays, and he had a brain problem. His brain was going backwards very fast, and everything was, and they said, with age. In a couple of months' time, he would be like a man of in the 90s, and he will not remember anything and stuff like that. And I said to him, man, there's a guy named Kenneth Hagen coming to South Africa. Let's meet each other at Honeydew. So both of us got lost. So we came there late. We didn't know where the place was. So we had to sit right in the front. That's the only two places it was open was right in the front. <laughs> And I was no church goer by then, so we had to sit right in the front, and here's this guy preaching right in our faces all night long. <laughs> Power was so great, and at the end of the meeting, you know, he lined us all up, and he was about three, four people away from us, and we already felt, you know, the power of God teaching us. We'd never seen anybody falling in the power. we never heard of anybody falling in the power of the Holy Spirit. So we were the first people that we saw falling. <laughs> you see? So when Kenneth Hagen came close to us, you know, I, I tried my best to stand and I just couldn't. And when he touched us, we were out. My brother first fell, then I fell. And he got up and he said, I'm healed. And he's been healed since then till today. It's a long time. But I remember the scripture that was preached was this scripture. Proverbs chapter 6. So let's read it. My son, I can well remember the message. If you have become security for your neighbor... If you have given your pledge for a stranger or another, you are snared with the words of your lips. You are caught by the speech of your mouth. Do this now at once and earnestly, my son, and deliver yourself when you have put yourself into the power of your neighbor. Go bestir and humble yourself. Okay, let's stop there for a minute. I don't think... At the first glance, you can grasp what he said there. But that night, the sermon was about, you are snared and caught with the words of your mouth. So make sure you say the right things and make sure your pledge is to the right people and make sure your friendship is at the right place. And I remember the one testimony he told is, this woman had a cancer on her leg. And he said to her, just start confessing the word and don't confess anything else. He said, for 18 days, just confess the word. And he don't know why he said 18 days. And he said, on the 18th day, he said, in between, this woman wanted to say other stuff. And she just remembered, for 18 days, just confess the word. And on the 18th day, she got up out of bed the morning, and the cancer just dropped off her leg, and she was healed. It was great. It really blessed me. Listen to it again. My son, if you have become security for your neighbor... If you have given your pledge for a stranger, okay? If you gave pledge, you know what a pledge is, to a stranger, okay? Then, I want to put the then in there, you are caught. What's that, caught? with the words of your mouth. You are, you are snared with the words of your mouth. I said, Lord, this is tough. And he says, do this now at once <laughs> and earnestly, my son. Deliver yourself. When you have put yourself into the power of your no neighbor, go bestir and humble yourself. Okay. Immediately, suddenly, deliver yourself. 
deliver yourself, okay? He uses the word humble. So you got to, in a way, humble yourself by delivering yourself, by coming out of what you've been caught by, what you've been snared by, because of something that your mouth uttered, which made a pledge to a stranger. And then he calls the stranger your neighbor. Okay? And I said, Lord, just give me revelation. He says, if you make friends with somebody that you are not befriended with, somebody that you don't know, and in the spirit realm, you call that friendship. You make a pledge to something that you don't know by the words of your mouth. So your words of your mouth make a pledge of friendship. So you actually draw friendship by something that's not supposed to be your friend. And you make a pledge by the words of your mouth, by the t-shirts you wear, by the stickers on your car. You make a pledge to something that you don't know. Then you snare yourself, you get yourself caught up with what you've confessed. So, you make a pledge to a stranger, and you are caught. You are snared. So, son, deliver yourself. Humble yourself. Come out of what you snared yourself by. Hmm? Friendship with the world is enmity with God. Friendship with the world is, say, Lord, I'm a grace preacher. I preach grace will do everything grace. God says, this is still my word. If there's stuff that's said here, it's still for you to, to, to pay attention to what I said. So this morning, I came to pray. So I'm walking around here praying. Now, for those who don't know, I, I studied and did electronics for about nine years before I came into the ministry. Right? So this morning, I was walking around here praying, and the young people were cleaning. And uh, I was just like, wham, there I go. Caught up in the spirit realm, and I just see this vision, real vision, so caught up in the vision. So I'm not going to, uh, you, know, you know, bore you with electronic stuff, but I saw like, you know, I'm just going to, I'm not a, you know, like an artist, and, and you know, that's, that's a plug from the side. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to make, and, and, and I saw this plug, and it was lying there, and here inside, you know, was like, you know, circuits, you know, with, you know, and uh, stuff like that, and stuff like that, and going down, you know, and there was like circuits, you know, all over, and, you know, mm, and coming down, you know, and all stuff like that, and here on the side was a speaker. Speaker, and a plug. And like a radio receiver. Huh? So, huh? yes. And God says, okay, it's not working. I said, right. God says, so where do you start looking for the fault? Okay, it's funny that everybody says, okay, plug. <laughs> a, plug. I had this camera one day. And the flash didn't work. So because of my electronic background, I just took the flash and I stripped it. And I took all the little parts out. And I had my little meter and I tested the diodes and the transistors. And I checked everything. And it was lying there. I said, you know, it doesn't seem like there's anything wrong. Everything seems fine. And Elise said, have you checked the batteries? We're going to get what we never got. We're going to have what we never had. We're going to be prosperous where we had poverty. We're going to have success where we had failure. We're going to have breakthroughs where we had resistance. We're going to have answered prayers where today we didn't have it today. Okay? So it's time for the church to start having what they confess, to start possessing what they believe they're supposed to have. Here's a book full of promises, and how many things have you been praying for, but it's still not there yet? How many times say, it's not working? You don't want to say it, but you think it. Okay, just be honest. You know, it's not coming... I've been sowing, where's my harvest? I've been giving, where's my getting? I've been praying, where's my answers? And it's like, God, I believe you, I trust you. And you're not going to say it's not working, but you think it's not working. So God says, it's not working. So the first thing is, is it plugged in? So I want to ask you, are you plugged in? 
to the power. Okay, so in Matthew 26, Jesus is talking to the disciples, and he's talking about his death and resurrection, and he said, how will we be raised to the right hand of power? Okay, to the right hand of power. Romans chapter 6, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall, also be, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Okay, why not? Because verse 4 says we are living in the newness of of life. Everybody says, this is my portion. Okay. Ephesians 2 verse 6 through 8 says the following, and you died together with him. You were raised together with him. You are seated together with him in heavenly places. For by grace are you saved. By faith it's not of yourself. It's a gift of God. So this is more or less Romans 6. Jesus was raised to the right hand of power. You died with him in baptism. You are raised with him to the right hand of power. You are supposed to be seated far above principalities and powers. Colossians 3 verses 1 through 3 says the following. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. The Amplified Bible says the following. Set your mind. And then he says, keep it set. Keep it set. Okay, set your mind and keep it set. On the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God and not on the things below of this earth. For your life is hidden with Christ in God. Okay, so our lives are hidden with Christ in God. We're seated at the right hand of power. We need to think the things where Christ is seated at the right hand of power. In other words, we are supposed to meditate. We are supposed to have our hearts and our minds, okay? That is the word meditate. Our hearts and our minds are fixed on one thing. We're thinking it daily, and that is plugged into the power. Let's quickly go to Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 19 says, I want you to understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of His power. In and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in his own right hand. I, know, I hope you can see we are doing the same thing here in the, in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority, power, dominion, every name that is named above every title that can be conferred not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are to come. He has put all things under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church. Say, I am the church. Christ is the head. Okay? The head is supposed to give the commands to the body. Okay? The brain is seated in the head and from there comes all the nervous functions, all the signals comes to the body. The brain sends the signals and the hand starts working. The feet starts walking. Okay? The mouth starts tasting. But the brain is functioning everything in the body. So I've got to be listening to the body, uh, to the head. I've got to be plugged in. To the head, which is the power, which is everything that's above everything. Hmm? Okay, and he's given him to be the head of the church, a headship. Verse 23, which is his body. Now, this scripture has blessed me this year. The fullness of him who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself if jesus christ is the head and i'm the body and i get the signals from the head wherever i walk 
This is more or less the scripture. I take the fullness of God and I'm manifesting it wherever I walk. So if I walk into a place, I am supposed to manifest the fullness of God. I'm not supposed to go and compromise with them. I'm not going to get from them. I'm not going to draw from them. I'm going to intimidate them. I'm going to prove to them that I've got the greater power. So I don't pledge with strangers. I don't get snared and caught up with the words of my mouth. I walk in there and I'm the ruler. I'm the authoritative person. I'm the one that's walking in there. Christ is the biggest. Not the worldly systems. Not worldly bands. Not worldly figures. Not worldly film stars. Not worldly figures in sports or anything. But if it's Christian, if they confess the Lord Jesus, I will stand with them. But I cannot pledge with the world. I've got to get my mouth not snared and not caught up. I'm supposed to take the authority where I walk and I'm not supposed to pledge friendship with them. So i got to meditate. Now, this is all... Meditation. Get plugged into the power. Jesus Christ at the right hand of glory. So God says, okay, you plugged in. It's still not working. Where do you go to? Now we start looking for faults. Yeah? Maybe it's Jackie. Maybe it's Susan. Maybe it's Uncle Peter. Maybe it's my wife. Maybe it's my son. Maybe it's my father. You now I look for the problem. God says, uh-uh, start with the speaker. Okay? So... People that studied a little bit of electronics, you could ask Don and them, we did electronics together. We built little circuits there in our room, in the hotel room in 1973. We used to build little, you know, stuff for our cars and controls and stuff like that. And if there's a problem, fault finding, you start at the speaker. First, you plug it in. And when you do fault finding, you start there. You don't start there. This is how you do fault finding in electronic circuits. For anybody that studied electronics, you start at the back, not at the front. Okay? You start there and you test the speaker. If it's working, you start going from there and you go backwards to find the problem. You don't start here, you start there. So God says, so the speaker is your mouth. So if you have a problem... If the thing is not working, your prayers are not answered. You're not getting what you're supposed to get. You're not having what you're supposed to have. You're not breaking through in what's supposed to break through. You plug into the power. You meditate in the right stuff. How's your mouth? You are snared with the words of your mouth. You are caught with the words of your mouth. What pledges have you been making by your confessions? We confess Jesus, but what else do we confess? So let's go to James chapter 3. Mm. Just, I, I wanted to do the whole chapter. Let's just do verse 2 in the Amplified Bible. For we all often stumble and fall and offend in many things. If anyone does not offend in speech, never says the wrong things. He is a fully developed character and a perfect man, able to control his whole body and to curb his entire nature. You know what a curb is? It's that stones that they lay next to the road to show you that is the road. That is a curb. So you can curb your entire nature. So you can have your nature running in the right direction. Your nature can be in control. And the Bible goes on, it says, chapter 3, the tongue is an uncontrollable fire. He says, the nature, the natural man can tame anything. All animals, all birds, all reptiles are trained by the natural man. But the tongue cannot be tamed. But the context is the natural man. So the natural man cannot tame his tongue. But the minute I get spiritual, I can tame my tongue. So spiritual people can control their tongues. So if I never say the wrong thing, 
I will be a perfect man. I will be a fully developed character. I will be able to curb my entire nature. I will be able to control my whole body. I will be the perfect man that in my dreams I wish to be if I can just say the right stuff, have my confession under control. Now, here's the shocker that came to me. The Bible says Jesus talked to them about this. So there was this certain rich man and there was this beggar at his gate called Lazarus. Remember? And uh, not Lazarus that he raised from the dead, the beggar Lazarus. He said, and Lazarus died and went to the bosom of Abram. And the rich man died and went straight to hell. Don't collect 200 rand, don't pass, go, don't stop at Piccadilly Circus, just go straight. Okay? Remember the story? And, and the rich man looked up and he saw Abram at the bosom, oh, he saw Lazarus by Abram. And there was a great gulf between the two of them. And this guy was burning in the flames. Hmm? And he said, Abram, okay, this is his prayer, <laughs> Luke 16, <laughs> verse 24. The rich man cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame why didn't he say come wash my body why didn't he say come cleanse my brain why didn't he say come touch my eyes he said just bring water for my tongue he says I'm tormented in this flame just bring water for my tongue Revelation 16 Verse 10, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. I said it so many times when I preached on the tongue and your words. I said, just take up your Bible so that nobody can see you stick out your tongue and say, if it wasn't for you. Yeah. How many times have you said, but this is not the message of today. Today is a total different. It's not about what you say is what you get and stuff. Is You confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Isaiah says it. Romans says it. And Philippians 2 says it. The whole world shall confess with their tongues that Jesus Christ is Lord. Three times in the Bible, the scripture is mentioned that everybody shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay, so we have, we have, our heart, our minds in meditation, and we have our tongue. We have our tongue or our mouth. Hmm? God appears to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, and he says, Joshua, let this book not depart from your mouth. Joshua 1, verse 8. Keep it in the midst of your heart. And meditate upon it day and night. And so shall your success and be progress be seen by everybody. So if you want to be successful, if you want to be progress in life, it is meditate. Speak. Okay? Let it be in your mouth. Let it be in your heart. Speak it all the time. Meditate it all the time. And your progress shall be seen by all, and your success shall be seen by all. Don't you think it's time that people say, see your success, see your progression, see your advancement in life? It's time that we're not trodden on anymore by worldly systems. It's time that we start taking the lead and say, why must we take lead from worldly systems? Why can't we set the lead? I said, I said to Johan the other day, why don't we get songs from God? Why must we copy the world and say, what are they doing? Can't we send a trend? Can't we set a new trend? Can't we stay with God and get something from God and say, look at what I got from God? Hmm? Yeah, let's go to 1 Timothy 4. Look at verse 12. Let no man despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word. Okay? Verse 14, neglect not the gift that is in you which was given thee by prophecy by the laying of my hands. Verse 15, meditate upon these duties. Give yourself wholly to them so that your profiting may appear to all. Hmm? Verse, the Amplified Bible says that your progress may be evident to everybody. Deuteronomy 30 verse 14, this word is near you in your mouth and in your heart to do it. 
Romans chapter 10, the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart to speak it. So the word is not far. You got to have it in your mouth and in your heart. Meditate and speak. Speak and meditate. Meditate and speak. Speak and meditate. Don't pledge to strangers. You're going to be caught with the words of your mouth. You're going to be snared with the words of your mouth. My son, deliver yourself. Humble yourself. Get out of what you've pledged yourself to. Get your confession straight, man and get delivered from us. Psalm 19 verse 14 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God. So it's both things. My heart and my mouth got to be in agreement and I've got to confess the right stuff continually. I can't confess two things. I got to be single-minded. A double-minded man we heard last Sunday is unstable in all his ways, James chapter 1. I can't have two minds. I can't think worldly and godly. I can't pledge with the world and pledge for God. I can't confess Jesus and confess idols. I must have a singular confession so that my progress will be seen. Is that okay? Mm. So Monday morning, 2.30. Woke up and God said, friendship with the world is enmity with God. So I just took friendship, jumped up. God gave me three scriptures. Three scriptures that says, Abram was a friend of God. Abram was a friend of God. Abram was a friend of God. So go to Genesis 12. That 2 Chronicles 20 was the first one. 2 Chronicles 20. You remember when Jehoshaphat had this great battle with the three armies and he started seeking the face of God. And this is what he said. God, you're the God of Abram, your friend. So if Abram was your friend, I'm coming in that friendship story. Don't you want to just help us? And remember God came in the midst of the congregation and said, you know, the battle is yours. It's not yours. The battle is the Lord's. God will fight for you. Mm. Then in Isaiah 41, and then in James chapter 2, when he speaks about faith without works is dead, and he comes to verse 23, and he says, uh, as Abram was called the friend of God, because he believed, and he did did what God asked him to do, and his works combined with his faith was accounted as righteousness. So look at Genesis chapter 12. Now in Haran, the Lord said to Abram, go for yourself, for your own advantage. Everybody say, this is for my advantage. Mm -hmm. Go away from your country, from your relatives, your father's house, to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you with abundant increase of favors. And make your name famous and distinguished. And you will be a blessing. Chapter 13, verse 2. Now, Abram was extremely rich. In livestock and in silver and in gold. Blessed, rich, etc. You can put in there whatever you want to put in. Abram had it. Okay? What did he do when God spoke to him? God said, Leave what you're busy with. What was he busy with? Idol worship. Sun worship. He was busy in Haran with his people in worshiping other gods. God said, Abram, come out of that. But Abram had to leave some stuff to get the blessings. You see, but sometimes people want to cling to stuff and then they say, why don't I get the blessings? We hold on to certain things and God says, no, friendship with the world is enmity with God. God says, eh, 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 if you pledge to strangers, you are snared with the words of your mouth. You are caught with the words of your mouth. Come out of that pledge that you made by confessing stuff with your mouth. Unknowingly, you said certain stuff. Now you are snared. Deliver yourself. Humble yourself. Come out, man. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 14, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Okay, but God is, this is God's word. This is the great apostle of grace. The brother Paul writing these letters. To who? To the church of Jesus Christ. Not to sinners. Not to unbelievers. To a church that stood behind in no gift. 
Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I will be their God. They shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you. You shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Y'all, yeah, let's clap. Hmm? God says, if you that are evil know how to do good to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven do to you? Now I say, Father, but now where's, where's the getting? Father, where's the blessing? Father, where's the breakthrough? He said, oh, fellowship, concord, communion, Okay, it's not coming, okay? Come out. When last did you make a quality decision and say, my goodness, what am I busy with? Why aren't I getting what I'm truly supposed to have? And I'm not teaching law. I'm preaching out of the Word of God. From the mouth of the Apostle Paul, the grace preacher that said, grace be unto you. And he's speaking to people that's flooded with the Holy Ghost. So you plugged in. You're looking at the speaker, you're getting your mouth right, you're getting your heart right, so you're meditating, you're speaking, but why is it the receiver not yet working? Somewhere there's a fault, so we've got to do fault finding, not by the law, but by coming out. By not having friendship, not having fellowship, not having communion, not being in temples of idols, not pledging to strangers and getting caught with our mouths and getting snared with our mouths. Hmm? Proverbs 15, verse 1. A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise utter knowledge rightly, but the mouth of the self-confident fool pours out folly. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch upon the evil and the good. A gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life. But willful contrariness in it breaks down the spirit. A fool despises his father's instruction and correction. But he who regards reproof acquires prudence. In the house of the uncompromisingly righteous is great priceless treasure. But with the income of the wicked is trouble and vexation. Okay, so God is saying, if you try and get your income in the way the wicked get it, it's going to bring you trouble. But if you get your income God's way, it'll be tre precious treasures in your house. First Peter chapter 3. Let's just do from verse 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lip that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. We just heard it in Proverbs. And his ears, listen to this church, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? Okay. Confession. Your tongue, your speech, your mouth. Are you pledging to strangers? Are you caught up with the words of your mouth, snared with the words of your mouth? Then deliver yourself in a humble way. Get out of it. Don't be proud and say, no, I'm not going to go away from this. Come out from amongst them. Leave that place, Abram, and you'll be blessed. 
You'll be very great. You'll be awesome. You'll be rich in cattle, silver, and gold. Come out. Hmm? So here God says over and over, he says, my ears are going to be open to your prayers. Oh, God, when are you hearing me? He says, I can't. You said stuff and confessed stuff that made a pledge to strangers. You are caught with your own words. you got to come out of that. you got to deliver yourself. And when you come out, bam, prayers answered. Bam, prosperity. Bam, bitty, bam, success. Wham, bam, God says, I'm going to place you high and everybody's going to see your success and your progress. New Testament. Grace preaching. Mm. See, receive, man. We're talking about radio receivers. We got to receive the signal and blast the good stuff out. You plugged in, your mouth is right. Why is the receiver not yet working? Why can't we get from God? Why are we asking and not receiving? Why are we praying and not getting? Why are we confessing and not possessing? Okay, this scripture, listen to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. He says, Jesus Christ loved righteousness, but he hated evil. That's why God has anointed him with the oil of joy above his fellow men. People love righteousness, but they still cling to evil. God says, uh uh uh, uh. there's got to become a single mindedness if you want your prayers answered, or goes, but then you do to get. Well, I'm just reading the Bible. So if you want to attack me, you've got to attack Peter, you've got to attack Paul, because I'm reading from Peter and Paul, the two main pillars of the early church. This is what I'm reading from. They said it. Don't attack me. I thought you were a grace preacher. That's right. Psalm 141. Lord, I want to get my prayers answered. I want to get what I never had. I want to see what I never saw. I want to see this promise is now coming to fulfillment. You know, I never ask God, what must I do? But if he wants to tell me what to do, he's, he's, he's God. <laughs> Watch out. God wants you blessed. God wants you prosperous. God wants to bless you. God wants to answer your prayers, man. Help me not to confess wrong stuff after this. Help me not to be caught up with my mouth and snared with the words of my lips. Help me when I go out here to say, my Lord, let my prayers be as incense. Put a guard in front of my mouth. Watch my lips that I don't confess and pledge to strangers. <clears throat> Incline my heart not to submit. Listen to this. This is so precious. Incline my heart not to submit or consent to any evil thing or to be occupied in deeds of wickedness with men who work iniquity and let me not eat of their dainties. God says, do you want your receiver to work? Do you want to be plugged in but on the other side, get your mouth to say the right stuff. But on the inside, pick up the right signals and bam, bidi, bam, prayers are answered. Who are you associated with? But those that I'm touching today, may God make of you an anointed man and woman of God. May you go clean your websites up. May you go clean your cupboards out. May you go clean your, your CD covers out. May you go clean your bookshelves out. And maybe you decide, go and decide, I'm going to be a man and a woman of God. I want to set a new example on the face of this earth. So God says, if you've been involved with that, I didn't shoot you down. I just said right now that although you confessed it, took part of it, made yourself an enemy with God, declared your fellowship with the world, I want to say there's more and more grace right now available to meet this tendency that you got caught up with. So God says, I'm not angry with you. I extend grace to you. Come out. What a great God. He doesn't come on us and say, why did you listen to this? Why do you confess? He says, I want to give you more grace. My son, you pledged the wrong stuff. I want to help you. Yes, more grace. Come. I think somebody needs to thank God. God is saving your life today, man. God is saving your ministry. God is saving your business. God is saving your prayer life. God is saving you today. So God says, 
I love you so much. I can't allow you to get involved because I want to use you. I want to answer your prayers. I want to make you rich. I want to make you prosperous. I want to make people know your name across the world. Why subject to something that's already thrown their name in the mud because of their confession? Why do you want to be subjected to them? They must subject to you and say, what a man. You mustn't say to them, what a man. Hmm? So we confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Let's go to Romans 10 quickly. Verse 9. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Isn't this your heart in your mouth again? You shall be saved. For the heart man believeth to righteousness, with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. That is not, this is not getting saved from sin. This is not a scripture for sinners. This is a scripture for the church. God wants to save you from whatever you're involved in. For the scripture say, whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. Come on, if you make the decision today, you're not going to be ashamed. God's going to lift you up. God's going to raise you up. God's going to bless you. God's going to prosper you. God's going to do stuff for you. Hebrews 3, 1 says, partakers, brothers, partakers of the heavenly calling. Hold fast to your confession. Hebrews 4.14 says, Jesus is the high priest of our confession. So let's come boldly to the throne of grace. We need to have a single confession. Don't pledge to strangers. Deliver yourself. Get out of what you've been caught up into. Come on, get out. Deliver yourself. God gives you grace. Get out. John Osteen wrote a book. The father of Joel Osteen. Years, 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 years ago of rivers of revival or something like that. He said he saw himself sitting in this room, caught up with the stuff that he was caught up in with evil stuff that were not godly. He said, and he sat there and he said, God, deliver me. God, deliver me. And God said, why don't you just get up and walk out of this room? And he said, God, I will get up and I will walk out of this room. My word, I can speak it as much as I want to in this world. Bibles are lying in every house, all bookshops, hospitals, doctor's surgery rooms, consulting rooms. Bibles are lying all over, yet it's not working. God says, my word has already went out of my mouth. But it only operates when it's in your mouth. First Kings chapter 17, a widow's son died. She calls for Elijah. Elijah comes there, and he says, Oh God, are you now angry with me by letting the widow's son die because I prophesied over her good stuff, and now her son is dead? And remember, he stretched it out and called the son back. The son came back to life, and this woman said, Now I know for a truth that the word of God is true in your mouth. Listen to Exodus 4, quickly. Chapter 4, verse 10. Moses said unto the Lord, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent. Neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. I am slow of speech. I am of a slow tongue. Lord, I haven't got that personality. I can't just go and speak your word. The Lord said unto him, Who maketh the dumb or the deaf, the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and I will teach you what you shall say. Isaiah 59. Do you want to do scriptures here? Verse 19. So as the result of Messiah's intervention, they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west, his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him and put him to flight, for he will come like a rushing stream which the breath of the Lord drives. He shall come as a redeemer to Zion and to those in Jacob who turn their transgressions, says the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant or league with them, says the Lord. My Spirit, who is upon you, who writes the law of God inwardly in the heart. My words, which I have put in your mouth, shall not depart of your mouth of your seed, nor out of the mouth of your seed, seed, say of the Lord, from henceforth and forever. So arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. 
Hey, 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 the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. God says, I will not take my words out of your mouth, now, out of your seed's mouth, out of your seed, seed's mouth. But somebody's got to say it. Yeah. Is Jesus the main figure in your confession? Or who is taking the place of Jesus Christ? Friendship with the world, you declare God your enemy. You declare it. You say it. You say, God, I've decided you are my enemy. Don't answer my prayers. Or you say, Jesus, I put you the center. Be the center. Huh? And bam, bidi, wham, God will give you the right musicians, the right band, the right breakthrough, the right answers, the right money, the right friends. And all of a sudden, stuff will just work out. If God is God, he can bless me. If he's not really God, that's why we seek in other places to get blessed. So we don't really trust God. That's what God said to me when Kubisi was a baby and we had troubles and Elise had fever and Kubisi got the fever too and the both of them were very sick. And I was the pastor of a full gospel church, a denomination in South Africa, and they expected of me to do house visitation every night. And my wife and my first baby were very sick and I didn't want to leave them. And then Lee said, you've got to go do house visitation. And I got a phone call from the other pastor and said, you've got three homes to visit tonight. You better go visit them. And I said, but my wife and my baby is sick. And I want to stay with my wife and my baby. God said, can you trust me? Who's going to look after my wife if I'm not there? God said, can you trust me? Can you trust God for the thing that you desire? Can you trust God to help you get that business? Or are you going to help him by the worldly system? Are you going to trust God to give you that ministry or are you going to help him with the worldly system? I'm just asking. God says, are you going to declare me your enemy or do you want me to be your friend? Abram, the friend of God. Abram, the friend of God. Abram, the friend of God. Come out, Abram, and see how I'll bless you. Bam, Abram's lifted up. Even the Muslims exalt him as their father. So God looked after them that night. I just want to help you right, okay? I did the house visitation and I came home and they were well. When I came home, the fever was gone, and they were well. And they were sleeping, fast asleep, and I felt their faces, no fever. Is your receiver working? Are you plugged in? Are your confession right? Is the circuit going? Is the current coming through? Hmm? Hmm. Psalm 145. Let's do it this way. Take your Bible in your hand. Can we get the board away? We're going to stand and read it. And then we're going to sing, Jesus be the center. Psalm 145. I will extol thee, my God, O King. I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great of mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raises up all those that, he bowed, that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thy hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever 
and ever. Bless the Lord.
Right, we're going to make a commitment tonight all across the world. And I want us to get the song there on the computer, either this one or Jesus All for Jesus, any one of the two. Jesus Be the Center or Jesus All for Jesus, so that the band can come too. We're going to come, everyone, and we're going to say, Lord, tonight I'm going to deliver myself. I'm going to walk out of whatever is not bringing glory to God. I'm going to dedicate and commit my life to Jesus Christ, confess Him as Lord of all. Amen. And then I'm going to come in 1 Timothy 4 and 2 Timothy chapter 1, and I'm going to lay hands on you and I say, I dedicate you to Jesus. As a man of God, I'm going to do it. And you ready and say, Lord, I'm there. Right. Come, everybody. They're going to play a song there. We're going to all come and say, Lord, I dedicate, I commit, I break, I walk away. Get your wife, get your husband, get your children. Dedicated and committed. 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 Every single one. Dedicated and committed. Dedicated and committed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Dedicated and committed. Dedicated and committed. Dedicated and committed. Dedicated and committed. Father tonight. Dedicated and committed to you. Father tonight. Dedicated and committed. Dedicated and committed. Every single one. Dedicated and committed. Father with a baby as well. We dedicate and commit them to lead young people in the very presence of the Almighty God. Dedicated and committed. 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 Father, tonight, dedicated and committed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Dedicated and committed. Father, tonight, let it be a new day. Dedicated and committed. Dedicated and committed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, all these young people, dedicate them. I commit them to you. I dedicate and commit them to you. Dedicated and committed to the cause of Jesus Christ. Dedicated and committed. Father, Father, dedicated and committed. Dedicated and committed. In the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Dedicated and committed in Jesus' name. Tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hey guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content and we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.